grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. On this All Souls Day, the commemoration of the faith of the party, the Church throughout the entire world remembers with love, affection, and faith all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith. In a very special way, as John's family and friends, we also remember him with great gratitude to Almighty God, as we thank our Heavenly Father for his life, for the family that he had, and for all the talents that he had throughout his life, which he shared generously with the church, with his family, and with his colleagues. We also welcome this morning Father Willie uh, Stephen, who joins us in Holy Mass, and as we prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, we call to mind our service. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good and gentle shepherd who leads us rejoicing into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You ever plead for us at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith confesses that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, we rejoice to rise again to him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one Lord forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> the souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God, no torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die, their going looked like a disaster, they're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as people see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and prove them worthy to be with him, tested them like gold in a furnace, and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for the visitation, they will shine out as sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in the Lord will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those the Lord has chosen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I shall not turn away, because I have come from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. And the will of the one who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and I should raise it up on the last day. It is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Today on All Souls Day, we remember with gratitude and love those who were close to us in this life and have gone before us on the pilgrimage of faith. And that sense of things is summed up in one of the prayers of the Requiem Mass when we say, we believe that all the ties of love and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives does not end or unravel in death. It's that perhaps more than anything else that sums up the Catholic attitude to death, the belief that the ties of friendship and love that bind us in this life does not end in death, but rather they continue. It's for that reason that Catholics pray for the dead because they firmly believe in the bonds that exist, that they still continue, that we are one with those who have gone before us. The bonds of love and family, the strong ties of faith and the communion we share in Christ, all these things remind us of those links and bonds that we have with those who have gone before us. And that's made no more clearer than in the mystery of the Mass. Because every Mass that is celebrated is offered both for the living and the dead. And every Mass that is offered is made up not only of those here on earth, on earth those present in the church, but also it is made up of those who have gone before us in faith. Because the mystery and assurance of the Mass reminds us that when we celebrate here at the altar, heaven 
and death are united. We're united in the Mass with those who have gone before us through the communion of saints. And it's for that reason the Mass is the proper place for us to pray and to remember the dead as we do so today. For John, the Mass was utterly central to his life and all that we've said would be familiar to him and second nature to him. Brought up in St. Rock's Parish, he and his brothers served Mass regularly in his childhood. It was a large Glasgow parish where eight priests ministered in the parish. John loved to serve at the altar and throughout his life he carried that sense of privilege of being at God's altar. He had a keen interest in his faith from the very earliest days at school and retained a good working knowledge of Bible history which he had enjoyed in the classroom. John was a clever man with a passion for literature. He particularly enjoyed Greek mythology. His favourite author was Charles Dickens and he was very knowledgeable about the works of Dickens. John was part of the choir both in St. Rock's and also in Blessed John Ogilvy in Easter House and it was there that he met his wife Rose. They were married in February 1965 and blessed with a large family now stretching into great grandchildren. John was a family man. His life revolved around the family. He loved nothing more than to be with the family at a get-together with him playing the guitar at the centre. And music was to play a large part of John's life. He took an active part in the local folk music scene for many years. He played in the Caritas Club in Airdrie, as, uh, as also in, the, in, in Dillett's Bar, the Cellar Bar, Harry's Bar, and latterly in Sadie's. He was a founding member of the local folk group, uh, the Columbines, and produced an album in the late 70s and early 80s. John was also a working man, and a hard-working man at that. He started out as a joiner, then he joined the Co-op Insurance Society as an insurance agent, and worked his way up and achieved promotion to become an inspector. Throughout his working life, John was a committed and active leader within the trade union movement, a strong supporter of social justice and civil rights. He dedicated a huge amount of his personal time to ensure fair treatment of his colleagues. He struggled to retire and when he left the CIS he did some voluntary work with Meals and Wheels. He also became a driver for cancer care, taking patients to the Beetson appointments. One of his great passions in life was fishing. He loved, uh, his love for fishing started at a very young age, bagging minnows uh, in the Monklands Canal and it progressed um, to hook and then to line fishing. He became an, an expert fly fisherman and travelled far and wide um, throughout the country to the best trout and salmon fishing areas. John was well known to everyone for his sense of humour, often terrible bad jokes. Many lovely tributes have been paid to him and they often mention that sense of humour that John had. John was a member of this parish community of Holy Trinity and All Saints since 1972. When the diocese purchased the current church, uh, the building was in bad repair and John was heavily involved in getting the church and the church hall fit for purpose and put his joinery skills to good work. He helped form the first choir in the new church and played the guitar at the 11 o'clock folk mass each Sunday. He attended 
morning mass, the, every opportunity he could, and he served in this parish as a Eucharistic minister for many, many years. John, like many Catholics, had a great devotion to a blessed lady, and he was blessed on two occasions to go to a lady's shrine at Lourdes. It had always been his ambition, and he was delighted to get the opportunity to visit Our Lady's Shrine. Today, Catholics throughout the world remember with love and gratitude their loved ones on this All Souls Day. John's family thank Almighty God for his good and generous life that found its meaning and its purpose in faith, in family, in friendship, in, in much love and joy and song throughout this world. We ask God to grant him eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. We stand together as we turn to God our Father as we place before him our prayers and petitions. Please stand. We pray for John and for all our brothers and sisters who have departed this life, that on the commemoration of all souls, they may be welcomed into your kingdom and granted a place of everlasting peace. Lord, hear us. For all the sick, especially those suffering with coronavirus, we ask that you calm their fears and surround them in your peace so that they may experience your healing power of love in mind, body, and spirit. Lord, hear us. For John's family and for the family across the world who have been affected by the loss at this time, that in their sorrow they may find comfort in your presence and feel your love through the generosity and support of others. Lord, hear us. We pray for all healthcare professionals, especially those who cared for John in his final days, that the Lord may continue to, to protect, strengthen, and sustain them as they put themselves at risk in the service of others. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are isolated or separated from loved ones during this time of pandemic. In particular, those suffering from loneliness and poor mental health. Please help them remember that they are not alone, that they have your love always, and brighter days will come. Lord, hear us. And we ask the help and intercession of our Blessed Lady, who prays for us always, but especially in the hour of death. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our loving Father, hear and answer all these prayers which we make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness you have this bread to offer, good chance is given, and human hands is made. It will become for us the bread of God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and bread in the hands that become our spiritual bread. <coughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Amen. 
As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings to the Lord, for the salvation of your servant and son of God, we beseech your mercy, that he who did not doubt your son to be his loving Saviour, we also find in him a merciful judge. For this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift that your hearts the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to God our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give the thanks, Lord, to the Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. You bend the hosts of angels, adore your majesty, and rejoice in your presence forever. We are voices to pray upon your prayers, in one chorus of exalted grace. As we Church, 
During the distribution of Holy Communion this morning, I invite you to tell please the social distancing that we all require to have at this time. So that means that perhaps when you're coming to the Communion, that you're trying to, to remain uh, in the, those family groups that I see you in, and also that um, if you're taking a little longer, please do take the time as you come to the Communion. And so you come out of the centre aisle and then you come in the side aisle.
It's only to say that I knew John from 1997 when he came to me to ask about spiritual direction and I said to him that there were quite a few men at that time who were interested in spiritual direction and why didn't we gather together as a group to do mutual spiritual direction which is what we did so John is at the very beginning of a group that took the name of Onir from the Greek Oniris, which is a dream, and John was a person of dreams, of dreaming of justice and peace. And that group is still going from 1997 through till today. And in fact, a couple of years ago, we produced a little booklet for our, <clears throat> for our 20th anniversary. John... <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, John, as has been said, was a man of terrible jokes, and that's the worst that could be said of him. He was a man who believed in the truth, and one of the memories that he shared with us in or near was going down in Glasgow on after Bloody Sunday on a protest, and how difficult he found that. It wasn't his personal kind of thing to do, but he did it and took all the abuse that was going on that day. But we want to remember him, and we do remember him as a just man, a very good person who was a great source of inspiration to us in the Onir group and who will be remembered by all of us today, some at the cemetery today, and others watching this Mass online. We thank Father Willie for those um, very kind words and um, uh, very revealing words about John, and we also invite um, Father Willie to lead us in the final commendations of the Requiem Mass. So please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother John. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ who conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God come to his aid.
help us to remain to comfort one another with faith, with hope, and with charity. Until again, we in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this with the same Christ our Lord. May the angels of the Lord be paralyzed by the Lord to welcome you and take you to the Holy City, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Thank you. 